One single moment can change a life forever. The people in this documentary could just as easily be anyone in this room. Not, none of us are out there to get hurt, and nobody ever wants to be hurt. But I realize through all this that it affects a lot more people than just yourself when you do get hurt. And luckily enough, I was, I was healed up and things I got back to work and was able to see everybody that was so concerned when it did happen. But like my dad and my sisters and my wife and son and my friends, and it was just tough on everybody. Like Stacy, Stacy, the personnel girl here, had to go to the arena that day to get my wife from the practice because I was obviously late. And uh, I just wouldn't want that to happen to anybody else again. It's just too tough. You gotta focus on what's happening right now. You gotta be there 100%. You can't be wandering around dreaming about the new car you bought or the problem you got with divorce case or I've seen some people go through some awful stressful times out there and still work properly every day, no problem. And yet his son was up on a charge of impaired driving and his wife was leaving him and a whole bunch of scenarios and his wife was dying of cancer or whatever the case may be but he'd still go out there and stay focused on his work for the day and then worry about the crap at night. That's, that's the bottom line. You gotta stay focused. No matter how big you are in that industry, those trees will kill you. They're just too heavy. I'm 18. I've been June landing for just over two months. It's kind of the bottom of the totem pole, I think. It's not, not as tough a job as people make it out to be, though, you know. If you're in half decent shape and get out there and you know, get it done. There were lots of times when I first started there, I'd go and do it as if I was going to do a hockey game. You know, I played hockey all my life and you know, you get pumped up. I'd always be listening to music and stuff like that before I go out there. And now it's just, you know, you go in there laid back. If you go in there too excited, you're going to hurt yourself. My dad always told me because he's, he's set chokers when he was my age too, he said, if you think you can go this fast and take it down 10% and you'll be able to keep up all day. I think that's what lots of people do is they try and go too fast. And I know you're supposed to, you're supposed to go fast because you keep up production that way, but you're going to hurt yourself if you don't take it down a little bit. You can control the now, but you can't control a week away from now. You got to stay concentrating on this today. and be aware of that possibility coming up and that it might be a hazard just as you're working into it. You know it's there. It was right on, right at quitting time on, I believe it was a Friday, beautiful sunny day like it is right now. And, um, you know, I was making plans for the weekend and everything else thinking about other things and it was time to put the saw away and I noticed I had a co-worker still working. So I jumped out there, gave him a hand, finished up a row. I uh, trimmed a couple knots and then I saw, I saw a spark come right up the chain. I was on fire. Yeah, it's, and I mean, it, it, cause when you're on fire, it's all of a sudden you're like, Jesus, I'm on fire. It can happen like that, right? It's blink of an eye. I was, it was near the end of the day. I had my son's hockey practice and I was thinking about what I was going to be doing for hockey practice and I was talking to the quality control guy. Everything was cool and 
second later, it was like, oh boy. And I got the fire out. Um, had to, you know, nylon bucking pants are still melting, so I had to take those off as quick as I could, down to the ankles. Well, a fractured C7 and T1 in my neck. I mean, I had some pretty good blisters. They're about maybe a foot high. There was a limb, but there was all kinds of limbs there. They never did find out which one it was, but it was a limb that hit me. I, I mean, most likely I spilt some fuel on my bucker's pants. Um, wasn't aware of it. Um, and, and somehow the, the fuel cap wasn't secure, wasn't on properly. At first I thought I'd broken my arm. I went to reach my radio because I was sitting down, obviously, and I couldn't move my arm. So I thought, oh, shit, I broke my arm. So I went with my other arm. It didn't work, and then I sort of panicked. I weren't sure how bad it was, and they were trying to arrange a flight to Vancouver. And, uh, I mean, the doc gave me all the morphine I could handle, and it wasn't, wasn't doing any good. The whole crew was there, and they got me using the spine board, and Billy pewed me under there. I, I try and ask everything I don't know about. I ask questions about every time it's done. But I mean, they, I ask questions, and there's sometimes where even my hook tender will ask me questions or something like that for something like you share your knowledge with each other, right? Like I know I don't have as much knowledge as he does, but certain things you do. Like I know like everybody looks at something a different way, right? Everyone can see something in a different point of view and different dimensions. And you just get Len to come down here and give you hand. Because Len has got a lot of experience on this machine as a landing man and as a loader operator. And when someone's got advice for you, you listen. And lots of times you think they're just trying to criticize you or something like that. But nowadays, back 40 years ago, they they wouldn't be doing that. It's like you get you get in there and you're expected to know everything right away. And now, like lots of the, there's lots of younger guys in the crew, and they'll explain stuff to you. If they're explaining something to you, you listen because uh, chances are it's probably going to help you out. Even though we don't get measured on how much wood we get down in a day, everybody wants to get up to par with the guys that get the most wood, right? And um, so that comes up all the time. They're not they're worried about they're not getting enough done, not getting enough done. But my story to them is the safer you do it, the easier it becomes. And before you know it, you're getting the production. You don't even know you're doing it. It's a lot simpler than running around, getting yourself in trouble making a big mess. If you do things properly like the book says and like we teach you, then it just, it comes. It just, that's all you can say is it comes. It just comes all on its own. Running around and hurrying just makes things worse. In 2005, we, we had a pretty severe incident. Uh, it was in December of 2005. Uh, <coughs> December the 13th, yeah, uh, about 10.30 in the morning, we had a fatality, it was a fall. The snag started to fall, and there was a, a trigger event that happened, which caused the snag to break 15 feet up, which another section of the snag came back at him as he was getting away from the tree, came back at him and then it, and it uh, struck him from behind and uh, fairly killed him right away. We're working for the company and I was the safety task force member. We were at a committee meeting in Canberra River and I got pulled out of the meeting and, uh, and, uh, and informed that I, that I had a fatality <clears throat> at my operation and that it was a fall. And I says, so which fall is it? I know the fallers that are in there. He says, well, it's Bob. And Bob uh, is my uh, son-in-law. Yeah, my daughter was... Uh, pregnant at the time, which they'd just found out. For the second time, they'd been trying to have another baby. And uh, uh, they just found out that she was uh, going to have one. So that little guy was born after. <laughs> From the moment 
that I got notified at that meeting. Since then, well, your life changes. And everybody's life changes. Uh, it's not just my life. It's all the fellow workers that work with Paul. Uh, mm -hmm. Their life changes. Yeah. The families, uh, my Sonia, my daughter, her family, our family, Bob's family. Yeah. I'd never forget what happened, and um, but once I recovered, I, I mean, I had a, I, I spent a lot of time thinking about a lot of things. Uh, just personal personal commitment to my own health, um, to safety of the workplace, to to everything that you, you know, and and uh, it definitely I had a better attitude when I got back to work, and uh, you know, not just about work but about life in general. Not just me. I think you get a little bit cocky after the five, four to six, seven year range, and you think, yeah, maybe you are a little bit invincible, and you can you start producing and you start getting wood on the ground and. And luckily enough, I was able to keep doing it again and hasn't slowed me down, but made me much more alert and realizing we are the softest things out there and it doesn't take much. That is a big message that people have to do is uh, when they go to work, whether they're setting chokers, whether they're hooking on a grappiard, or whether they're running a machine, a whole chuck, or a running load, or a driving truck, or working on a draw line. Uh, they're out in the bush doing layout, you know, walking over it, climbing over a, an old windfall or something, is that you have to keep your mind on your job. You have to keep focus. You have to think about what you're doing. Any job out in the bush, it's a job where you have to keep completely focused. And these days, I know guys who are coming to work and, and uh, saying, hey, you know, I maybe shouldn't be at work today and I turn around going home. And I say to them, good on you. You know, that's a good move. I really felt it was something that was, didn't have to happen, it was controllable. It wasn't just like, shoot, I could go out there tomorrow and the same thing could happen. I knew it was preventable. If your mind's not on, on the job and what you're doing, that's when you get hurt. I mean, as soon as the second you start thinking about something else, like when your turn's going and you're wondering what you're gonna do tonight or something like that, that's when something's gonna go wrong. Always alert and ready to move, ready to move, always ready to move. Because sometimes <clears throat> that dash of 15 feet is huge. Take that extra two seconds, it's nothing. Two se even two minutes is nothing. When you consider the disruption, and the, uh, the change in life, that can happen. <laughs> you know, that, to me that, that was everything. I wouldn't work somewhere where I felt I was in danger, my life was in danger. I just want uh, uh, other workers going out who work for Western Forest Products to, uh, to really think every morning before they go to work that their goal and objective should be to go home at night to their family. And they have to think of what it's going to take on their part to make that happen. It's their responsibility to make that happen. 